When he was just 23, Bernard Kroger used his life savings of $372 to open up a grocery store in downtown Cincinnati. Just 10 years earlier, he'd watched his father's dry good business go under during the financial panic of 1873. And then he watched his father die. Kroger was just 13 at the time. He had to drop out of school to help support his family. So when he opened his own grocery store, he was determined to have it be a success. By the next year, in 1884, Kroger had his second store up and running. He was guided by a simple motto, be particular, never sell anything you would not want yourself. Kroger was particular in how he managed his business. That quality helped him build one of the most profitable businesses around. Kroger is the largest supermarket chain by revenue in the U.S. and the third largest general retailer just behind Walmart and Amazon. By 1902, there were 40 stores and the Kroger Grocery and Baking Company was incorporated, selling 1.75 million in merchandise each year. Kroger was innovative. It was common practice for grocers to purchase bread at local bakeries and then resell it in their grocery stores. Kroger thought he could do better. What if he could make his own bread? It'd be cheaper for him and therefore cheaper for his customers. It would also provide a fresher product Kroger became the first grocer in the country to establish its own in-house bakery. That was soon followed by the addition of their own meat department. This was a novel concept too. Customers had to go to a butcher, an additional store visit, to purchase their meat before this. Kroger brought these all under one roof. This saved both time and money for his customers. And that in turn made Kroger a lot of money. After all, Time is money. He was so successful, in fact, that he received death threats. Local bakeries feared that Kroger would put them out of business. One note delivered to his home said, If you don't raise the price of bread at once, you will be killed or shot. Kroger, never one to back down in the face of a challenge, responded swiftly and calmly. He simply expanded his own bakery business inside his stores. He survived, and so did bakeries. Then Kroger got another idea. Maybe he could make more of his own products. When farmers brought in a harvest of cabbage, Kroger bought it in bulk and took it to his German mom. She made it into sauerkraut, and Kroger sold it in his store. His customers loved it. Today. 26% of Kroger's total sales come from private label items, 40% of which are made in one of Kroger's manufacturing plants. In 1916, Kroger launched self-service shopping. Instead of the clerks fulfilling a customer's order, customers now had the opportunity to roam the store and select the items of their choosing. By the end of the 1920s, Kroger, through both opening and acquiring, had over 5,500 stores. Quality was important to Kroger, so much so that he began his own routine product quality control in the 1930s. His stores were the first chain to monitor quality and scientifically test the foods. Kroger Stores was the proud recipient of the prestigious Black Pearl Award in 2012, which honors one company each year for food safety and quality by the International Association for Food Protection. In 1972, Kroger was the first grocery retailer to test the electronic scanner. This brought better efficiency. They also pioneered formalized consumer research. This brought better effectiveness.
Kroger has purchased and merged with many companies over the years. They own quite a number of stores now, actually. Some of the more well-known stores owned by the grocery giant include Dillon's, King Supers, Ralph's, Quality Food Centers, and Smith's Food and Drug. They acquire new markets with acquisitions and sell off stores and chains that aren't meeting expectations. Kroger is trying something new again. This time, it's the restaurant business. They've launched Kitchen 1883 in Union, Kentucky and Cincinnati, Ohio. It's a relaxing, rustic, comfort food meets culinary cool vibe restaurant with high hopes of adding more of them across the country. Today, Kroger has almost 2,800 stores in 35 states. Kroger is credited with the creation of the successful, low-cost grocery chain model that continues today. It's an American institution. Kroger is fresh for everyone and dedicated to feeding the human spirit. Their Zero Hungry, Zero Waste campaign plans to eliminate waste in their company by 2025 while feeding the communities in which they do business. Kroger has nearly half a million associates and serves over 11 million customers each day. The things we take for granted today, picking up a fresh loaf of bread at the store, along with some thick, juicy steaks, all under one roof, all trace back to the innovative, creative mind of a school dropout from Ohio. While Bernard Kroger died in 1938, his pioneering grocery business is still going strong today. Thanks for watching, Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana.